Hello, today I want to start discussion of Hussdorf measures by first going over some examples in R2. Suppose we have a subset of R2, which with the metric that it inherits is a metric space. And suppose that you have some reasons to believe that your X is a one dimensional object, whatever that means, and you want to talk about its length. So let's begin with the simplest of examples. Every time I put a bullet point, that means I'm switching to a new example. So the first example I want to do is let's look at a line segment of length three, which is secret to us. So all we know is this uh, line segment, which is my X. And I want to talk about its length. So we know its length is three by cheating, but how can you find that three by purely metric definitions? And the answer to that is that the length of X is equal to the diameter of X. And that diameter is something definable in any metric space. So you take pairs of points in your space, you compare, you look at their distance and you look at the supremum of such distances. So that is finding the farthest pair of points within your space. And in this case, it will be the end points, therefore giving you three. Great. So let's upgrade our example. What if you have, you have uh, this part again, which you know is three, and then there is another piece of your space here with length two. Now, um, your X is union of these two segments. Diameter can be as big as you can imagine uh, by taking one segment and placing it farther away. So diameter here will be a very, very difficult um, estimate for, for your accurate length. The solution though here is that you look at such quantities. So you, you write your X to be constructed of two parts, E1 union E2, and you write, so one of E's is one line segment and the other is the other segment. Then you say that length of X is diameter of E1 plus diameter of E2. Here it will be three plus two and that's five. So again, you recover your length of your space uh, via purely p uh, metric definitions and uh, that is the diameter. However, if you are talking about an arbitrary subset of R2, um, you don't a priori know how many different components it has. And also you don't exactly know how to break it up into, into pieces. So there are many ways of doing it. And therefore, for the definitions to work in an arbitrary metric space, what you would do, so here, here your, your space, even if you are simply talking about line segments, you can have um, very, very um, non-trivial examples. Just think about um, having uh, iterated constructions like counter set. And, uh, and therefore, uh, we come up with the following estimate for the length of X. So we look at coverings of your space X by other subsets, EI, and you allow countably many of them because as I just talked about, it's very easy to imagine countable components to your space. And then you look at the summation of the length of each piece in the hope that on each piece, this diameter is a good estimate to your length. And, and finally, because you're looking at all possible ways of breaking your space up, you have to distinguish between them, or maybe you don't distinguish and you talk about the infimum possible such quantity that you get. 
So this will be infimum of summation of diameters of EIs and over, so infimum is over all possible ways of writing X as a subset of collection of EI. Um, now, does this give us the length of subsets of R2? The answer is no, even in the simplest cases, uh, it does fail. So one example that I can give you is, suppose you have um, just an L, and here suppose this length is two, and this length is two as well. Now, if you are trying to find, so, so this infimum of summation of, so number one, diameter of um, x is equal to two root two, that is the furthest pair of points from one another. And, and you can take x to be, um, subset of x equal e1 so you you can cover your set just by itself and then so this infimum of all possible sums over all possible coverings is uh, is not going to be more than 2 root 2 i don't care if that is actually the best but uh, we know that but we know that in a fair world, if we are going to talk about the length of my metric space X here, um, it has to come to four, uh, which is bigger than two root two. So the above infimum that I've defined underestimates the true length. And the reason for that is that you have this diameter and because it that your set is curved it, it has bend um, to infimize you kind of cut the corner so you don't you have this diameter and uh, then you can take actually a ball of diameter equal to that much and then your whole set will be contained inside this. And for the same reason, you can say that if you have, if you have one ball of diameter, so diameter of this ball, say equals um, A, then no matter how crazy your set X is, If you are, if your set X is inside this ball, so for any metric space X contained inside this ball, um, we have this this infimum of summation of diameters of all coverings I going from to one to infinity um, is never gonna be bigger than A, simply because just that one ball. Um, you can take that to be your E1, is a covering of, of your space X. And because you're looking at infimum possible, um, you will never go above that much. But this is not true, right? Because inside that ball, you could have uh, as big of a length as you wish, even infinite length. So this tells us that something is not quite right yet about our approach to defining length. And the reason again was that once you have one diameter, it, it kind of contains all the curves and bendings within it. Um, that happened in both of these pictures that you see. So how can we avoid that? How can we avoid having one set doing too much work for us, covering too much of our space? And the answer is, um, we fix some positive delta and require that in our coverings, diameter of these covering members 
be less than delta, I want to also put equality there for every i. So that means um, even if one ball of radius a, as here, could cover all of your space x, it's not allowed because you have to cover with with sets of diameter less than delta. So th this delta will ultimately be very t small to avoid exactly that picture. So if I go back to the to the example from above, and then the, the rest is exactly analogous. So you just infimize over all coverings uh, subject to this restriction on the diameter. So here, again, let me talk, look at this L-shaped curve that I had, which had length here and here. Now, because your, your coverings can be at most of diameter delta, so you can put a, a, a delta diagonal here so that the only part where you kind of can be clever and save length in that infimum is taking this little l to be one of your sets ei. And then for the rest, you actually have to take um, straight segments. So maybe you break into these parts and then into these parts. But the, the part where we actually lost some length was due to avoiding this corner or not seeing the corner. And this time, uh, the no matter how clever it covers the the missing part of the the missing part of the curve in that infimum will be only only happening in this tinier l so in this time this infimum uh, of summation of diameters of ei's will be not that bad let's say in estimating in estimating the length of this the length of x uh, in in previous one let's let's recall that you missed a lot of length because you took this to be estimating this plus that. In, in the new picture, you take this delta to be estimating this and that, but that error is now much more negligible than the previous one. Uh, remember that here and here, they, the, the sum of the length will just give you the accurate length happening from here to here. And uh, this then, error is something order delta, what we do then is, um, so this new summation that we have under the restriction that diameters be less than delta, we can give it a name, we can say it's the length of your set space x subject to this coverings with, with delta. Now what you then do is that and, and this is pretty easy to prove but since because we will talk more about that in the general definition of Hausdorff measures is that if you compute this h1 delta of your space x um, if you restrict your delta then you you're taking infimum over a smaller class and infimum then increases because some some spaces, some collections that gave you the infimum may not be admissible anymore. So this function is never increasing and it may flatten out, it may drop, but it will never increase. That's the point. And going backward, uh, it can reach infinity or it can reach some finite value. But anyway, this is a function that is um, non-increasing in delta. Now we let, so that is something to be verified. But once you know that this is non-increasing, we let the length, the Hausdorff dimensional 
measure the h1 measure of x to be these um, estimating length so h1 delta of x uh, where you take the limit so you take limit as delta descends back to zero of h1 delta so h1 of x is limit of h1 deltas of x uh, where delta goes to zero so if these are approaching something here this will be ex this value will exactly be your h1 x and uh, in in the l example you can see why that happens if delta goes to zero the error you you incur is is getting smaller and smaller that goes away in the previous example here um, this circle covered it okay good but then you say then you say well if if you are required to cover by by sets that are no bigger than delta length you cannot take this whole um circle and then you have to contend with circles of radius no more than delta you can see still that some balls over underestimate the length because the curve still has two copies inside each one of them but the error of course is getting better some balls you see that will cover only one line within them and 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 that means smaller delta gets you closer to the length of this curve so it's still bad but once you get delta maybe one tenth of this you will end up with having so the, let's say green is one some delta and then red is an even tinier delta so that you will have um sorry about that tinier delta so that your balls or coverings have to have radius much less and then that's why you cannot have any ball picking two parts of your curve and now the summation of diameters of the red balls truly is close to the length of the curve no underestimation of the length so um that is i hope these examples uh will help us understand the reason why Hausdorff measures are defined the way they are uh, where do these deltas come from why do we send them to zero and whatnot but meanwhile you can you can begin exploring with this definition and try to prove simply using the definition uh, why the length of a line segment is what it is um, how computing the the parameter of a circle will look like under this definition but um, that's it and uh, the message here is that uh, we built h1 delta of your space x um, by purely metric constructions and then um, h1 delta will always increase to h1 of x as delta goes down to zero we will see that uh, not in h1 but with respect to any other Hausdorff dimensional measure um, we will have similar properties so if you have questions about these examples please put them in the comment of course, I, I have made a lot of imprecise claims. These were only some motivating examples. And uh, hope to see you in a follow-up video where we go over Hausdorff measures in general. Thank you so much. And please uh, subscribe if you haven't yet. A lot of cool stuff in metric geometry coming up very soon.